Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla and today I am going to share the second part of the series which is going on. If you remember the first episode was with respect to the overall design and development process. This one which I am going to share a little more is about the planning phase. The third one will be with respect to product design process. The fourth one will be with respect to the process design phase. The fifth one with respect to that validation process of the process and product design. The sixth one will be with respect to the feedback assessment and the corrective actions that are being taken. The seventh one will be with respect to the change management process and design and development process. And the last in this series will be with respect to what are the key challenges that the organization faces during their new product development process and what can be the possible actions that organization can take. So today I will be talking about the first phase of the APQP manual that is about the planning phase. Dwight Eisenhower said that in preparation for the battle, he finds it useless to plan, but he thinks that planning is indispensable. Something similar is important in new product development process, where unless and until the organization is planning effectively and correctly, they cannot assure that whatever the next phases are there, they will be serving the purpose what is being intended by the customer as well as by the organization. So planning phase is the most important and the critical phase. If you look into APQP manual which is second edition July 2008 as well as IATR 16949 clause 8.3, there are many specific things which are given with respect to the planning process. But before going ahead with the planning process, it is very important to prepare for that phase. So what are the key things that needs to be prepared in that particular phase? The first one is with respect to identifying the complexity of this particular project, what are the key things which are there? The second thing is with respect to formation of a cross-functional team of the relevant people which may include supplier and customer also. The third one is identifying who will lead this cross-functional team because it's very important to identify the right leader for a particular project. The next one is with respect to what kind of documentation that is needed in this particular process so that we are sure that whatever we are planning it is being documented correctly. The next one and the most important thing is about identification of responsibilities and authorities for all the cross-functional team. And the last one is about identifying what are the communication channels which are required so that this cross-functional team can communicate with each other and they can also communicate with other relevant parties. So once this particular preparation is done effectively, then the organization can go for the input stage that what are the possible inputs that are going to come from the feasibility stage. Because at the time of contract review, there are many things that are being discussed and freezed and there are many inputs which received earlier from the customer, they are being uh, reanalyzed again and some agreement is happening. So what are the possible inputs in the planning phase? The first one and the most important is voice of the customer. When we say voice of the customer, it means what is exactly is the expectation of the customer with respect to the product, what they are going to get after the final phase. So it includes some targets with respect to quality, what kind of rejections, PPM they are expecting. Second is with respect to productivity. Generally, the customer specifies that they want to produce say 50,000 pieces a month. So what kind of targets that needs to be set internally so that organization can achieve that particular target. Then during the contract review phase, a money is being set that okay, this will be the final selling price of a product. So based on that organization has to do the planning. So that it shouldn't happen that by the time everything is complete, it is being observed that this particular project is in a loss. Then another point is with respect to timing, there is always a certain deadline that within which organization has to do the prototype and then the pre-launch and mass production and all these things. So the timing is very, very important. See, these are some of the key inputs with respect to voice of the customer. The second one is with respect to the warranty data, the recall data and all this other information with respect to the similar kind of product, maybe from the same customer or maybe from other customers also. That also helps in the planning phase. The third one is with respect to the new product development which the organization may have done which is similar to this particular product. What are the challenges that the organization faced at that time? What are the things that the organization learned? Things gone right, things gone wrong. All this became key input with respect to that. Then the next one is the targets with respect to the reliability. What is the expectation of the organization with respect to the reliability of the product? 
that is another input with respect to reliability then some other inputs which are important with respect to the design and development processes that whether there is any requirement of the embedded software now if you see all the vehicles present times maybe 50 percent of the vehicles are running through some electronic components here and there and generally we generally use the word ecu electronic control unit sometimes it is also called as engine control units so there may be different kind of software that may be embedded so that uh, we want to have certain functions that should function accordingly so what are the embedded software requirement then apart from that statutory and regulatory requirements that what is the legal requirement with respect to the product or maybe what are the safety related requirements say for example with respect to seat belt or maybe airbag or maybe the emission norms like uh, recently in india we shifted from euro 4 to euro 6 so what are the legal requirements with respect to that that also is one of the key input during the design and development phase then there are certain process and product assumptions that are also being there that is that needs to be considered say for example generally we are using aluminium die casting or zinc die casting so why don't we try and see magnesium die casting it's a new kind of technology what can be the challenges what can be the investment and what are the benefits that can also be reviewed in this time then something similar is like product and process some targets some design goals are also being there that Presently, we are at Euro 4. Now, we have to set some benchmark with respect to Euro 6. So, maybe in India, we are very new to Euro 6, but maybe we can see some other countries, what are the challenges that they have faced, uh, what are the benefits that they are getting with respect to that, and based on that benchmark data, we can plan our transition from Euro 4 to Euro 6. So, once organization get all these possible inputs, then the cross-functional team works together, and then what are the possible outputs that can come the first one is with respect to design goals now design goals will again be dependent upon the voice of the customer it can be with respect to feel function fitment and anything else which is the customer is expecting then the other outputs are related to reliability goal and quality goals like what is the failure time of the product say when the product is being installed on a particular automobile it can be related to some targets related to rejections it can be some target with respect to that what kind of warranty will come and if the warranty will come whether it is say with respect to say 50,000 kilometers or maybe three years so all those things becomes some quality goals and the reliability goals then during this stage a preliminary bill of material can also be prepared that give a fair idea that what are the different components that will be part of the particular assembly and it also gives an idea that uh, which are the components that can be common from the other products what are the new supplier that need to be developed for getting this new components then the next thing can be with respect to the preliminary process flowchart have a fair idea that how the process is going to move from incoming inspection to the final dispatch to the customers that gives an idea that what kind of preparation organization has to do based on that process flowchart then some other key outputs with respect to this process is identification of special characteristics whatever inputs that the organization has received from the customers what can be the possible special characteristics with respect to the product and related to the process which may be relevant to ensure that the product and process characteristics are being taken care of once all this information is there then there can be a product assurance plan that can be prepared which will be an input for the next stage the second phase wherein the fmea and other related activities are being done one of the very key and the last output with respect to the planning phase is the management support that how much top management is involved in this process what kind of information is going to them and what kind of output or direction is coming from them so if an organization systematically identifies all the inputs and whatever are the desired outputs for a particular product that are being done then there is a high possibility that we can assure customer satisfaction we can also assure that whatever timeline that has been set that is being achieved and as well as the employee motivation the people who are working on that project they will always feel excited and charged up with respect to that so if i give a summary i initially talked about what are the preparations needed before going ahead with the first phase 
and those preparation include identification of the complexity of the project, making cross-functional team, identifying who is the lead of the cross-functional team, documentation requirement, communication channels, what are the responsibility and authority that is being needed. And based on that, some possible design inputs which are there for the first phase that are related to voice of the customers, reliability goals, learning from the previous experience, warranty data, some information related to statutory regulatory requirement, information with respect to embedded softwares and many other things. And the output can be in the form of design goals, reliability goals, quality goals, preliminary bill of material and process flow chart, identification of special characteristics, making a, a product assurance plan and getting the support from the management. So this is part two of this series of eight. The next video will be with respect to the product design process. So in case you think that you are liking this video and you want to regularly get this kind of video, so you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in case you want to get more detailed information about this video, you can click the below link and you'll get more information about that. Thank you.